Hey everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com, 203-892-4119. So, here we have another Ameritron AL80B amplifier. Needs a new plate tune air variable capacitor. Needs new gas discharge tubes at the base of the tube socket. I will replace the series glitch resistors and also put in a new SO239 connector for the output connection since it's not making a strong connection to a brand new PL259 connector. 3500Z has a grid to filament short and leakage between the plate and grid so this tube shot has a aftermarket anode cooler connection this tube has the skinny pin coming out of the top, so I cannot reuse this with a tube, you know, a Penta or other tube normal, you know, that, that has the fatter connection. So I will be replacing it with the proper one for this amplifier. So, okay, so I'll show the process of replacing that air variable cap. And I will show the damage uh, to the uh, you know, on the old one when I have it removed, and uh, oh, I pot that one. I'm all done. So I'll show you how I go about doing that. So I will be back. Stay. Okay. So first thing you have to do is remove all the knobs. I set the band switch to 160. Both air variables are set to maximum capacitance. That's where the plates are fully meshed. My voltage. Uh, setting basically everything to the left you know so um the little pointer things just a word of advice here i guess uh just a note as you can see a little split washer goes on the inside acts as a little spacer so it goes towards the brass on the vernier drive so i will remove the nut here this connection and on that connection and in order to get to the connection the other connections on the front of each air variable the panel has to fold out and I use a ratchet with a small extension to remove those two nuts uh, I will insider this to get that connection to drop out and then remove the two screws so I can pull that air variable out and uh, do the same on the other connection on the other side so I can slip the other one out after I uh, take the two screws out that hold it to the chassis. Okay, so I'll be back. See you soon. Okay, so this connection right here doesn't make any sort of electrical connection. It's just to give the board support. So I removed the solder and took the nut off and pulled that connection off. As you can see, it's right here. It's right here. 3 8 nut. So I'll use the 3 8 wrench. Uh, took the nut off over here. So don't forget to loosen the set screws, which are Allen screws for the vernier drive right there, which connects the shaft to the vernier drive. So what I do is I rotate it counterclockwise to get at the bottom one, then I rotate it back so it's fully meshed again, and then I get at the one that is pointing straight up. And then when you go to put it back in, you want to make sure that it's fully meshed. Basically that that line is pointing towards zero. The screw hole is pointing towards zero. I'm sorry. Okay, so remove, I have to remove the nut over here. And do the same thing. Pull that out. That one is making an, making a, an electrical connection over there. So there's one nut on this cap that has to be removed when the front panel is pulled away from the chassis and when I pull these out I always leave one screw in I just loosen it up I remove the outer one for each one and it allows me to just slide the cap backwards it's going to be a tight fit with the fan to get the other one out but you can get it out uh, you know trying to get those screws in if I were to you know pull those out also that can be a pain so just leave those in place and you can slip the cap underneath the split washer you know, there's the screw head the split washer and then you know you have the 
flange for the air variable so you, you can't just slip that right under it makes it a lot easier the tip right there okay so I'm gonna go ahead and remove everything I'll show the damage to the capacitor and um, then I'll reinstall it all so I'll be back okay so the load air variable has been removed so you can see the damage to the plate tune cap is right here where it's all melted too far gone to try to repair it so I'll go ahead and remove that just like I described uh, the removal process uh, for the other one same same steps to get that one out and uh, I'll be back when the new ones installed so see you soon oh, I noticed something when I was about to unsolder this connection here yeah, it's a bad solder joint. Notice how it is just flopping around in that hole right there. Probably uh, something like that from the factory. Okay, so I'm going to pull that out, put the new one in, solder it up real nice, and uh, or as I usually say, nice, nice. I'll, uh, I'll be back. Okay, so I have the new one installed here. Plate tune air variable. I'll give you a pointer here. So, process of reinstalling. Sometimes the shaft, see that phenolic shaft that's pressed onto the shaft on the air variable? Uh, sometimes it doesn't line up with the vernier. You want it to slip right in. So what you have to do sometimes is loosen the two set screws that go through those two those two like, uh, they use them as nuts, but they're like standoffs, as you can see, set screw, set screw, set screw, set screw. So you loosen those two set screws, you don't pull them all the way out, just loosen them up, loosen them up enough so the vernier drive will slip back and forth. Put the air variable in, put the, the back screw back through, tighten these two screws, really tight. And tighten the two Allen screws on the vernier drive and then retighten those two Phillips screws on the outside here. And then I put the connection like this facing this way. You know, I slip it back on, lift the board up, put it through the hole, solder everything really well. well I put the nut on to hold it in place and I solder everything really well then I tighten up on the nut I'll snug it up with the wrench. Uh, prior to that, it just it's just uh, you know hand tight. So that's that. Here's the old one, so you can see it's damaged on this side, and it's also damaged on that side, hardcore. So and it's marking between the plates. So. That's that. I'll be back when the next one's installed. See you soon. Okay, so everything's reinstalled here. I took the nuts off and pulled the socket up off the standoffs here. I'm going to replace these two gas discharge tubes. Two probably had a flashover, so uh, you know, I always change them. Just, you know, even if they seem like they're okay you know who knows how long before they end up failing due to a, a fault like that so I'm go ahead and swap them out and I'll be back okay the old gas discharge tubes have been removed new ones installed removed the old series glitcher sisters cut the lead lengths on the new ones use the solder sucker clean the holes now I will install them I'll pre-tin the leads and install them I'll be back. Okay, it's all set. Tested full output on all bands. I provide a video to the customer of it working on one band. And I email or text it to the customer. So, brand new Pentalab tube. Awesome company. Great customer service. I recommend them a million percent. So, brand new glitch resistors. Two series glitch resistors installed. Yeah, variables in there. 
Clean the rotary switches, deoxid gold. Cleaned up on the solder joints. Replace the SO239 connector with a brand new one for the output. There's the old one right here. So that's that. So I'm going to go ahead and this is all set so I'm going to put it aside and I will show you a video of, of me high potting this tube and I'll show you what I'm talking about with the stem and why I couldn't reuse this. I'll give this back to the customer if he wants it. So, okay, I'll be back. Stay tuned. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and high pot this tube so I have the connections between uh, you know, the D my high pot tester is DC high pot tester. You need a DC high pot tester to test the tube. Should be limited in the microamp range. So you want to be able to flip the polarity. So if there's broken wire, you can pull the, the broken wire uh, one way or the other. Uh, may high pot okay in one polarity, but then fail the other polarity. So in reverse polarity, uh, you know, configuration. So uh, with a 3500Z, you should be able to high pot the plate, I'm sorry, the uh, grid to the filament to at least 3 kV DC uh, in both directions with the polarity. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my high pot tester and I will slowly bring it up. You can see there's pulling current right away the, on the low setting. So it's zero to six kV DC. And as you can see, pulling right away. If I go up a little bit, it trips. Okay, so I will shut the tester off. Since it failed one in the first direction, I don't have to bother uh, reversing it. So now I'm gonna go from, that's the grid. And I will go to the plate even though it's shot you know I let's say it passed that I would still do this test I'll put it medium setting so it's 0 to 12 kV good tube should high pot to at least double its its maximum anode voltage so it should high pot to 8 if it was okay so I'm gonna bring it up slowly starts to pull right around 6 kV, as you can see, starts to pull. Okay, so, tube is no good. I don't play, um, you know, I, I don't guess, I don't, you know, take risks. So whenever someone sends an amplifier in, I, I, I always high pot the tubes. I don't just plug them in, you know, because you can do all sorts of damage, extra damage, you know, by just plugging in, having the tube flash. Same goes with components like doorknob caps other things I you know I high pot them you know because sometimes new stuff is defective right from the factory so you never know you know so it, it pays to be careful so I'll be right back I'm going to I'll, I'll remove this set screw and then I'll show you what I'm talking about with the pin okay be right back okay I was actually wrong with this tube sometimes these have a skinny pin coming out uh, some tubes have a connection here that can be removed and then it exposes just the pin and I've seen these where they have the skinny one I uh, the other ones I've seen that look like this have that small hole this is not factory this is not needed what I I'll I'll give it back if the guy wants it back I have news for it but I want to explain something I've seen people who use these really tall anode caps the it's not a good idea to use this if you think about it you're adding more inductance and you can create instability issues with uh, parasitics so th there's no need for this you know I've seen crazy stuff like this I've seen them even taller wider and all that not needed so that's just uh, it's kind of like adding um, chrome chrome stuff to a motorcycle or whatever it's, it's just to make it look better it doesn't improve the the uh, performance at all so it's not needed um, you know this. Uh, you know there. <laughs> you know this seal's rated for a certain temperature. You know if you're pushing the tube that hard, then you know you're doing something wrong because you, you should never be able to get that seal temperature to the point where it would fail. Uh, you know other things. I've seen crazy things where people push them so hard that the 
and they don't have any cooling on the pins. The solder starts to drip out of the out of the uh, pins right here, and um, you know just crazy, crazy stuff. So, if you're using your amplifier like you should, you should not need some crazy dissipating cap on the top of the tube. So, okay. Well, that's about it. If you need an amplifier repaired, feel free to give me a call. There's my website and my phone number. Take care.